Hey there athletes, Coach John Ferry here from Team Wilpers. Happy to be with you for the week five athlete briefing for our 2023 winter run challenge. Sorry to miss you all last week, but I'm excited to be back and back at it here this week. So before we would go forward, naturally we're gonna do a week four review. So the week four is what we call our unload or our deload week. So what we're doing here is we're rolling back our volume, we're rolling back our intensity. So what we're hoping to achieve is that we wanna rest up a little bit. We wanna let our bodies absorb the three weeks of hard training that we've done thus far. We also wanna recharge. We wanna make sure that our bodies are ready and able to handle another three week tough block where we start to continue to add on intensity over that three week time before we come into our test week. So we're wanting one more time, rest, recharge, but most importantly, we wanna come through this week able to take on another large block of strains. That's what we're doing here in week four. So a reminder as always, we wanna make sure we're going into the website, checking that box. We wanna be chasing the 100% completion percentage. If you've missed one or two, it's okay. Don't let yourself off the hook. You wanna make sure we're getting as close to 100% as we can. So make sure you keep going back in, keep checking the box. 100% is an amazing goal, as close to 100% also an amazing goal. So it'll be a good comparable for another challenge as well. So now to our week five workouts. So coming off the unload, we're kicking it off with a 30 minute interval run. So we're going right back into those anaerobic capacity intervals. We're getting right back to that high intensity. So we're starting with our lunge matrix, which we've been now practicing for many weeks. Should be hopefully getting really comfortable with that. And we're also adding in some resistance band routines. So this is a second layer to that warm up. Great glute activation exercises with that resistance band. So you'll see our coach Emmy demoing that in the video link we shared. This, you know, I talked about our runner tool bag. These are things you want to add into your runner tool bag. You want to be great at it. And we're going to start incorporating these in the second block of this challenge. You know, this week we'll hit it twice. So that'll be kind of part B of that workout. So lunge matrix, very much part of the workout. Don't skip it. Lunge matrix, resistance band, glute activation. That's how we get started and ready to take on the strain. So as we come into it, we do the strider warm-up, which we've also repeated many times now. Once again, hopefully you're getting really good at this, a lot more comfortable week after week after week after week. As we previously discussed, it's a 10 minute warm-up, but a lot of people warm up at different paces. So if you feel more comfortable with a longer warm-up, 15, 20 minutes, etc certainly feel free to take it. Definitely by the time you get into your set, as you're very well familiar with now, you wanna be operating at a very high level. So we're coming in, we're doing a combination of one and two minute intervals over the course of this workout. So the big thing that we're introducing this week is the two minute intervals, our longest duration thus far. It is also going to be our maximum, kind of longest total duration we ever hit. That's the longest I want anyone at this pace. It's about two minutes total. So that we're introducing that this week. You know, it's gonna be a little bit challenging, but you certainly have built up to it. I'm sure are absolutely ready for it. So similar to every other time we've done these, it's very, very important both at the short, the short intervals and the longer intervals, and maybe especially that two minute interval to really take the recovery nice and light. You wanna hopefully you know, kind of rest up, let that heart rate settle, not all the way back down to easy, but to aerobic so that you're able to attack that next interval one more time. So make sure to take those recoveries nice and easy. It's the pace is uh, not only secondary, but unimportant. It's gotta, we wanna maintain a jog as best as possible, but the, the you know, purpose of the workout is to hit those anaerobic capacity intervals full focus. Finish up with a quick cool down. This would be a great opportunity. We have these five minute cool downs. And there, that's pretty brief. I would like you to kind of think about that five minutes as sort of the minimum period of time which you want to be able to go and cool down. But if you have extra time, especially a workout of this intensity and not a particularly long workout, you know, top to bottom, really a 10, 15 minute cool down would be excellent if you can put it in your schedule. Run number two, 30 minute hill run. So something we've done before, something that inevitably in the course of your running career, you'll do again. So we're gonna do the three calf stretch. Once again, not an optional thing, part of the warm up. gotta prepare your body to take on the strain. So do that three calf stretch. 
and repeat the resistance band activities because this is a glute and posterior chain focus workout. So we're gonna warm those babies up and then you're gonna feel it hopefully going into the workout itself that they're a little bit more active and engaged. You know, we're sort of forcing the matter by doing the uphill work, but those glute activations are gonna be a great way to get ready for the workout. So 10 minute warm up, inclusive of stride scan, then our 15 minute main set. So our hill repeats are ranging from duration of one to three minutes. So you've already accomplished the hardest part of this workout we did in week two with that three minute interval. So we're not adding any, did I misspeak? I think I did. Nope, 15 minute main set. So we're not adding too much here in terms of like the total duration. You know, we're gonna just continue to add uh, onto what we've done already. So we're just layering on top of what we've done already, ranging from one to three. The incline remains three to 4% indoors, the closest hill or the closest runnable hill outdoors. So get out there, run a good, you know, good nice hard effort on a hill. The biggest thing to remember out hills is that the timing doesn't always work out perfectly the same. So if you're running one minute uphill and one minute downhill, you're gonna be at a different spot. So it's, you're running one, mil, one minute uphill, the duration of that takes you, and then you're returning to your starting location. So don't get confused or don't get frustrated if the time, the exact time doesn't line up. You're just leaving your starting point, running one minute, three minutes, et cetera, coming back to the beginning. So we're working on these hills again because we're continuing to work on leg strength, we're working on turnover, we're working on running efficiency, and then uh, we're working on VO2 max in these workouts. So that is our 30 minute hill workout. And then our longest run of the week, we're now extending to a 60 minute endurance run. So this is our easy peasy effort, going easy feel from start to finish. The goal here is to train aerobically, have fun with it, spend extra time on feet. The pace is less important. The pace can dial back to make sure that the effort level feels easy. So we're adding a little bit of volume here, taking our longest workout from 45 to 60 minutes here in this, the second half of the, our training block. It's just a little bit more aerobic training time. So don't, you know, don't be worried. Don't be worried if 45 minutes is a max run for you right now. Just dial back the effort, dial back the pace, try to find something that makes it comfortable for all 60 minutes. And if that pulls you out of your pace range, no problem. Once again, the goal is to be comfortable and to be easy for 60 minutes. So our week five challenge, our back to business. So please share a photo or story about how you're getting back to business this week. We'll pick our favorite and send a little TW swag your way. So make sure to tag at Team Wilpers, at Team Wilpers Run Challenge, and hashtag Team Wilpers Run to participate. Don't forget the hashtag. So now questions from the group. And actually, before we get into questions from the group, I wanna just let everybody know we're gonna do a little bit of a special edition athlete briefing next week and we're going to bring everybody in from both the winter run challenge and the half marathon run challenge so it's going to be nice to have everybody back together we'll do it at the six o'clock time period and the reason that we're doing it is we have a very special guest bringing in team wilpers coach uh, rebecca wasner rebecca who was previously named new york road runner runner of the year is the three-time winner of the new york city triathlon and not to mention a mother to three so she will be here to answer questions on fueling, healthy recipes, time management, stroller running, etc. She is a, a powerful, impressive workhorse, and I think you will be, I don't think, you will absolutely find value in what she has to say. Uh, she has a wealth of running experience, so this will be an opportunity to ask questions right to her. So I'll put up a post next week to start gathering questions for Rebecca, and we'll kind of do a bit of a different style next week. It'll be a nice opportunity, I'm sure, for everyone as well uh, to you know, have me shut up for a bit and turn it over to someone else. I'll be excited to hear Rebecca speak as well. So now our questions for this week. So Christine asks, I know the winter challenge is designed to improve pace. How much of a pace increase should we expect to see by the end of the challenge relative to our current paces? This is a great question. And unfortunately, I have an unsatisfactory answer, which is that it is pretty much impossible to gauge. And the reason it's impossible to gauge is that it's really fully based upon your training history. So beginner athletes are going to have a huge performance curve. You're gonna accomplish much more quickly. 
than a, a very experienced athlete. Very experienced athletes have to work harder and harder, harder to eke out these like very small gains because they're getting to the top edge of maybe their performance potential. So in terms of a percentage gain, you know, we might see an ex uh, kind of a beginner runner that gains 10, 15% over the scope of a challenge, which is why it's amazing to be a beginner in all, all things. And, you know, much more ex experienced athlete or even, a, you know, we're talking an elite level athlete, you know, might be, you know, working his tail off, to, uh, their tail off to get, you know, 0.5%, 0.1%, but the objective really is to get a little bit better. So whether it's 10% or 0.1%, the goal, and you know, we kind of put it right in writing that the goal is to get better at the result of your 20 minute distance test. So as long as we're moving the needle forward just a little, little bit, that's what we're going for here. So the percentage, we can't really say, but the goal is just to get a little bit better. So Kate asks, how do I increase my steps per minute? So unless I'm doing an anaerobic paces, in which the cadence is uh, in the 170s, my cadence is always in the 160s. So not uncommon. So great news is that doing the high speed intervals is work. You know, I talk about, this is actually a great real world example. You know, I talk about the hill runs and the high speed work is that we're tr not only trying to get faster, we're trying to find running efficiency, we're trying to find running form. And so when you speed up, when you take it to a level where you have to hit that pace that you can only hold for a few minutes, your body starts finding it's the most economical way to move through space. And your body is finding this way that is actually more footfalls per minute to get to that speed. So the actual exercise of running these workouts is pushing your body in that direction. So when you start doing that enough, you do it long enough time, your body will start to remember those efficiencies and pull it back into easy running. That being said, there are also some other ways to go about it. But what I always like to have athletes talk about when we start talking about, about cadence is, is cadence you know, an issue? If I have a very healthy runner that's running successfully and running quickly or you know, running to the, the level they wanna be at, mostly the very healthy aspect of it, the last thing I wanna do is go change their stride for no particular reason, other than that someone said they should maybe be at 180 steps per minute. That, however, on the flip side of that, if I have an athlete that's experiencing chronic lower leg injuries and has a low cadence, it becomes a, an opportunity to say like, okay, we might need to get in and start tweaking this. So the ways that I would do it very quickly, other than the style of workouts that we're already doing here, is I would start working with some sort of either beat or metronome. So if you're very musical or very rhythmic, there are a ton of playlists out there set to about 180 beats per minute. But if you're all the way at 160, it might actually make sense to just kind of start with 170 beat a minute playlists, like not to pull it all the way there, to try to move it incrementally. So in going to that 180 steps per minute, you know, it's gonna take a minute. So it is not something I would focus on for the entire duration of a workout. It's something I would focus on for small segments. I would potentially incorporate it in part of the warm up for a couple minutes at a time. Then when you go into kind of the main set of your endurance runs, your, your kind of your easier runs, once again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily focus on it from start to finish. I would pick maybe every five minutes or every 10 minutes and I would try to focus on it for one minute at a time of maintaining that cadence because we're altering your rhythm, we're altering the stride. And so it's gonna, be a little bit different. You're gonna land on a little bit uh, different part of the foot. You know, the hip is gonna be rotating more frequently. So it takes time. You know, I think with cadence adjustments, it's probably not a, it's definitely not a day's, it's definitely not even a week's adjustment. We're looking at months and possibly even years to move, let's say from like 160 to 180, something that you build into your warm up routine. And, you know, we're kind of doing that with, with mobilizations right now, right? You know, we've got our, our 3D hip flexor uh, mobilization. We've got our calf mobilization. Now we're layering in resistance bands work. And so over the course of time, you start to build these routines and these cadence drills are something just like that. It might be that over the course of time, this is something like our striders, <laughs> one, one more thing, like our striders we put in in our warm up. We try to put it in to wake up our body, to familiarize ourselves with the feel of running a little bit faster. And if cadence is an issue that you're trying to work on, that's where I would incorporate it. I'd build it into my warm up. I would do check-ins in the mid part of my workout. 
uh, and start to move the needle forward there. So I said, there's the, the playlist. Playlist is a great option. A lot of people aren't musical. My good friend, Matt, no last name required. Uh, he, not a guy super rhythmic. He, you know, he does okay, but not super rhythmic. So he might have to, for a, an athlete like that, you use something like a metronome that's a little bit more clear. You can set either to you know, 180 beats a minute if that's what you're aiming for. You can even set it for 90 beats a minute. Try to focus on only like uh, only left or right footfalls. Sometimes a little bit easier is the you know, 180 beats a minute uh, kind of pulsing starts to get a bit chaotic. So doing it at half tempo, only focusing on one footfall landing starts to slow that down a little bit better. So a couple options to look at it, but you know, most importantly, is it really an issue? You know, it, are you experiencing issues with lower leg injuries, stress-related injuries? If so, absolutely a great thing to look at and a, hopefully a couple helpful tens, tips to get started on that. Well, ladies and gents, that is all for week five. I hope you guys are having an amazing week now. You're going to have an amazing week next week, and I can't wait to see you back here for the special edition briefing next week. Have a great one.